Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here back with another episode. We are sitting today, not in the studio. We are two rooms over now in the living room. I've asked you guys countless times on Twitter. I did this video last year. This is my long awaited living room setup. And this is probably the second room in my condo where I spend most of my time. I guess minus the bedroom where I sleep, but this is the gaming area where I play Xbox, where I watch TV, mostly a lot of Netflix and listen to music have friends over, and just chill out. There's the showstopper. Let's go. So the TV behind me is the showstopper and main centerpiece of the setup. It's the Samsung Q8C 65-inch 4K QLED curved display. I think I got everything. Panel, obviously there's a longer name. I will leave it linked down below. It is the first curved TV that I've gotten. It's the first QLED panel. And oh my God, all I can say is, A, it's extremely sexy, the curvedness, the sleekness. I feel like I'm describing a woman, but that's okay. I, I guess a guy can be curved, thin, and sleek. For a display so large, it's surprising how thin it is. It isn't wallpaper thin yet. On the bottom is probably the thickest part at five centimeters. On the sides, you're looking at around two centimeters. But if you have this set up on a TV stand, which I will try to leave this link below because I know a lot of you are asking about it. I think it's the perfect setup, especially for having a curved display, better than mounting it to a wall. Plus you won't see wires running down. And for wires, the setup here, it runs all through the back through one cable, connects to one central hub. And from there you can connect things like my PlayStation 4, like my Xbox One. Maybe one suggestion to Samsung, having a little mounting rack on the back of the TV so you can put that central hub so it keeps it off of your actual setup area to keep things a tad bit cleaner and a bit more simple, nitpicky, and it's not really a deal breaker. Second off, watching Netflix, it just isn't the same as when I used to watch it over in my studio, kicking back, relaxing on the couch, taking full advantage of shows that do stream in UHD like House of Cards, and of course, rocking the Xbox One S content and PlayStation 4, depending what game I'm playing. <sighs> Just devoting more time to gaming and relaxing more. That's probably why you haven't seen too many videos on the channel, but that is okay. Obviously can't stop raving about how good the picture quality is over on the QLED panel. One thing that I will note though, especially with me, I'm in a super, super bright condo here. I've got windows all on this area. That's where this TV really excels. I don't really see much glaring. The curvature of the screen really helps in that. It does give you a bit more of an immersive feel. And I have seen people complaining when it's darker as it is a curved display to see some parallel horizontal banding. I honestly really haven't seen that. And that's when you have a super light object in front of a dark one. No reported cases of that right now, even as my TV is going in the background seems to be all good on my end. So in 2017, there's new refined metal quantum dot material that lets the TV show off a wider color range. Samsung does claim that it shows 99% of the DCI-P3 color space, and they can show off full color volumes even when you crank up the brightness. And yes, these TVs do get extremely bright up to 1500 nits, which really doesn't compete with anything else on the market. These things are beasts with how bright they can get. Paired with a TV, I've decided to go all Samsung and pair it with a soundbar, the HWK950. This isn't your typical three, $400 soundbar. I think now it's around $1,200, which is pricey. But once again, trust me here on this side, especially for audio, this is more justifiable and I have been blown away by the results. So it has a 5.14 setup for Dolby Atmos, five surround speakers, one sub and four overheads. The main set of speakers has dual sets of ceiling facing drivers. It's got three forward firing driver sets that have a dedicated tweeter each. It also comes with a wireless subwoofer, which helps a ton over on the low end, plus surround speaker one and two to give you that immersive feel, especially when you're gaming. I found this immensely useful when playing first person shooters, a lot of battlefield, no one can sneak up behind me. It's probably the best soundbar slash subwoofer slash peripheral speaker setups that I've heard. And I've just been frankly honest, super impressed. And of course, underneath the TV is nothing without having your peripherals. I've got my Xbox One S, PlayStation 4 Pro, and obviously we've got to have Team Orange on board. I got these both done by Colorware, and I of course have limited edition controllers as I mostly Team Xbox all the way. 
Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this living room tour of my setup over here where I spend the second most amount of time. I will try to leave everything that was mentioned in today's episode linked down below. Super curious to hear your thoughts. And as a little bonus, as I always try to give back to you guys for watching and putting up with my face, I will try to give away a limited edition controller that I've got. Might even throw my PlayStation 4 controller in. Just be sure to leave a comment down below what your favorite part of this setup was, and I will announce that somewhere over on social. So catch the rest of you in hopefully my next video, next episode, next one here on YouTube. Peace.